You know, it's not entirely rare for a flamenco guitarist to profess that he's been struggling on a particular falsetta or riff for many years, or perhaps even decades. And if this is you, don't fret, pun intended. Here are a few reasons why you probably haven't been progressing on the flamenco guitar, accompanied also by some useful steps you can take to eliminate stagnancy, which has been standing in the way of you mastering the flamenco guitar. So let's get started, vamonos. So the first thing that might be holding you back is a lack of reference. What are you listening to? What are you trying to replicate? For example, are you playing a Bularia's falsetta or a Fandango's falsetta? Do you have a point of auditory reference? For example, like a digital recording or a YouTube video? Or have you perhaps never actually heard the falsetta that you're working on? Perhaps you learned it from a book with tablature or standard notation, but have no idea how the falsetta is supposed to sound, right? Are you familiar enough with the palo you're playing and its compas? In other words, are you familiar with the song form and the rhythm that goes along with it? Those are some questions you can ask yourself, and then here's what I would propose to you as a solution. You will become a better guitarist by stealing falsettas from every available source that you like. So you need to copy, you need to mimic, and you need to imitate the performances of the most sought after flamenco guitarists throughout the ages. So you take your pick, right? So this is done by listening very closely to the music that you're studying and finding a quality recording of the falsetta that you're trying to replicate and steal from it. This will be a reference. Great, so that's how you get your point of reference. Now the second problem, number two, going by feels and not objectivity. What does this mean? A flamenco guitarist, or any musician for that matter, can't judge how well he or she's playing simply by virtue of the fact that she feels like she's playing well. In other words, just because what you are playing feels easy or even pleasurable, it doesn't necessarily mean the tonal quality and the rhythmic quality of your performance would be pleasing to the ears of an audience, you see? In order to know if your playing sounds good to others, your music must be subject to an objective ear, but how? One easy way to get an objective ear is to record yourself playing, and that's the easy part. The hard part is listening to the playback of yourself, but this is a highly effective way of getting objective feedback, of getting an objective perspective on your playing. It's also a humbling experience. Objectivity is not always an easy pill to swallow. When listening to a recording of yourself playing a falsetta or a riff, you'll hear errors, but you will also hear perfections. So take note of each and address them in your practice. Now, the most effective way of gaining an objective evaluation is by studying under a good flamenco teacher who can listen to your playing and give you real-time feedback. And by the way, if you are a guitarist from a different style other than flamenco, jazz, classical, rock, metal, whatever the case may be for you, or have been trying to dabble in the world of flamenco guitar for quite a while and are frustrated along the process and you don't really know where to start, then I highly suggest that you book a call with me by clicking on the link in the description below. Let's get started, you, on your journey right away. Number three, not spending enough time studying and practicing. So what's study anyway, and what is practice? How are they different from one another? Well, study is the process of absorbing the music, in this instance a falsetta or a riff, and transferring it over to your instrument. Practice is the process whereby you interpret the music on your instrument repetitiously in order to master a skill or a set of skills. For example, al zapua or picado. And of course, it can't be stressed enough that consistency is the main key. So putting in the time is one thing, but it must be consistent. You shouldn't expect to really have any progress if you're playing one day a week, and then you go seven days without practicing or listening, studying or anything like that, and expect to get any really meaningful results. Now, hopping back to studying, the optimal way to study is by creating an environment with zero distractions. Avoid listening to the music you wish to replicate through little speakers on your mobile device. You need to really hear the notes. Listen to the music in a comfortable, quiet room through quality speakers or, or headphones, but listen intently while enjoying a cup of coffee or perhaps a glass of whiskey and allow the music to affect you at an emotional level. So this will help the process of memorization. Imagine to the best of your ability how you would approach the falsetta or the riff or the piece with your own hands on your own guitar. How often should a flamenco guitarist practice? Well, for the novice to intermediate player, practice should last anywhere from 10 minimum to 120 minutes max. For the professional concert level flamenco guitarist, practice time should last you know, at a minimum of two hours, at a maximum of four hours. 
Practice time should be divided up between two categories, one, repertoire, and two, technique. For example, play through your set of songs first and then move on to refining all the techniques through scales and exercises and also doing that to keep up the uh, hand strength and your skills. Another obstacle that might be getting in the way of your progress on the flamenco guitar is number four. Maybe you're lacking vision. What should the falsetta sound like from beginning to end? What approach will you take and what character or attitude will you lend to it? In other words, try to envision yourself, how you're gonna sound and how you're gonna look when you play the flamenco guitar. Picture yourself in the place you ultimately want to perform this falsetta or piece, which you're gonna master, and then write down on a piece of paper when you want to have it mastered, where you want to perform it, and what size audience you plan to play it for. Now, it could be an audience of just a few people in the living room, or it could be just yourself for personal enjoyment in the garden or in a park. Or it could be for an audience in a coffee house or heck, a whole audience of 2000 in an auditorium. The sky's the limit. Make the vision as large or small as you want. And finally, number five, technical impediments. So what technical aspects are you struggling with? Can you recognize the impediments? Are the impediments found in the lack of technical proficiency? Well, if so, then more consistent study and practice are probably in order. Are the impediments found in a physical problem, for example, an injury or deformity? If so, then explore devices to assist you, such as a footstool, ergonomic guitar support, etc. There's a lot of things available nowadays. Now, if you are experiencing pain while playing or are recovering from an injury, then I highly recommend that you pick up this book right here. It's by Virginia Asagra Rueda. It's called The Healthy Guitarist, How to Save Energy, Avoid Injury, and Get More Out of Your Play. It's available wherever books are sold. So review this list of stagnancy pitfalls from time to time, especially if you observe that your progress on the flamenco guitar seems to have diminished. Also, reach out to me if you have any questions about any difficulties between you and your flamenco guitar. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And please do me a big favor by supporting this channel by liking the video right now before you bail. And also hit subscribe to get notified every time I make a new video. And a special thanks to our Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash flamenco for you who brought you this video with our generous financial support. If you'd like to become a supporter of this channel, go ahead and click the link in the description below to do that. When you do support the channel, you get access to all my printable interactive tabs and backing tracks to my lessons. It's my way of saying thanks. Till next time, take care.